Today we are looking at the Sharks. Sharks are based on the 1984 Miami Dolphins, who made the Super Bowl in Dan Marino's second year. The Sharks have a pro-style offense, and the 3-4 defense that begins the game pretty average, but regresses to poor in most contests. They have three special rules, elite receivers, quick release, and the over-the-hill defense. The Sharks feature only two offensive formations. Their pro set is considered a balanced formation, and their shotgun is their pass heavy. Notice the Sharks do not have a run heavy formation because they relied so heavily on the pass. The Sharks also feature only two defensive formations. They have a 3-4 defense, which is their run heavy, and a nickel defense, which is balanced. So they do not have a pass heavy defense. One other thing you'll notice is that some of the cards for the Sharks have letters on them. These are the four uppercase cards, A, B, C, and D. These are the cards that you will begin the game with. These are the lowercase cards, and these are the ones that will swap out throughout the game. Notice these values are lower than their uppercase counterparts. Unlike most teams in breakaway football who have two challenge flags, the Sharks only have space for one. And unlike other teams that only have one, they don't use the second challenge flag at all. The Sharks feature elite quarterback and wide receiver play and a strong rushing game. Their offense is definitely their strength. Let's take a look at how this manifests itself through elite receivers. The Sharks Elite Receivers allows you to double the gain of a pass play. Now, what does that mean? On the card, you see it says that the gain is actually the difference between the pass play and the pass defense. Let's pick up the action at the beginning of the game. The Sharks are coming out first and five from the 25, and they've called Pro Set against the Fires 4-3. The matchup is actually... A medium pass versus wide run. This is a value 4 play against a value 1 play. So it would be a gain of 3 for any other team. However, because the Sharks have elite receivers, they are going to double this gain before they pull a game day card. So that means 4 minus 1 is 3 times 2 is a gain of 6 before the play is resolved. Let's pull the game day card and we see that it is speed kills which is a plus five. So in this instance we have six for the gain from the elite receivers plus an additional five which gives us a total of eleven. That's five and then six more. That is a huge play down to the 20 yard line and just that quickly it is first down. So now the Sharks have called a shotgun against a 4-3 of the fire. The matchup here is a play-action pass versus zone. This is a 4 on 3, which is a gain of 1. But remember, we are doubling the gain for elite receivers. So that is going to be a gain of 2. So right now this is a gain of 2. And the defense run card has no impact, so it is a gain of 2. And we're now at second down. The Sharks come out on second down again in shotgun, and the Fire are trying to retaliate in 4-3. They've called a short pass versus that same zone coverage. Again, the Fire trying to keep as high a pass value as possible on the field. And here they've got a 3-on-3, three -three, which is a gain of nothing, except we've got the minimum gain of 1 before the game day card. Notice, though, that because of elite receivers, that gain of 1 is doubled. So this short pass will earn 2. Even though the numbers match, the minimum gain of 1, doubled with the elite receivers, creates a gain of 2. Let's see what happens here on the game day card. Offense run has no impact, and that is a short touchdown pass from Dan Marino. That's not all the Sharks passing offense can do. The Sharks offensive pass plays that have no breakaway can convert into a short pass with a minimum gain of one, which of course chains with the elite receivers to really become minimum gain of two. 
Let's pick up the action in the second quarter. It's still 7 nothing. Sharks are leading over the fire. And this time, the fire have decided to put in a dime coverage to put in as high of a pass value as possible. Here we have a medium pass of 5 versus a zone of 5. In this situation, 5 on 5, uh, 5 minus 5 is 0. And so 0 times 2, of course, is 0. So there is no gain here. The fire feel like they've done a really good job trying to keep the elite receivers at bay, and they have, but they have not accounted for the quick release. The quick release allows the, uh, the Sharks to change this play to a short pass, provided there's no breakaway. As we can see, there is no breakaway. A medium pass and a zone do not result in an offensive or defensive breakaway. So, they'll spend this token, and that has converted now to a short pass. It is a quick release by the quarterback who simply dumps it off to this receiver coming out of the backfield. That is a gain of one, minimum gain of one before the uh, game day card. And as we know, because we have elite receivers, that minimum gain of one becomes a two. So we've got a minimum gain of two right now. Let's see what the game day card gives us. And that is going to be a perfect route plus one. So we're gonna get two for the short pass uh, conversion and then one more for the game day card for a total of three and a first down out to the 45. Notice that the quick release only has two activations for the game. However, if the Sharks achieve a rushing touchdown, they refresh the quick release tokens. Let's pick up the action later in the drive. It's still 7 nothing. It's third and one from the five yard line. So they've only got one line to go. But notice they've used both of their quick release tokens so they don't have that ability. The pro set play is an inside run versus tight run. This is not a breakaway. And so you'll notice that it would be a loss of one except for this minimum gain of one. So we have a minimum gain of one on the run. And let's see what the game day gives us. Hot Pursuit, so that gives us a minus two. This would actually back them up, but you'll notice the Sharks have one challenge flag that they have not used yet. So they'll go ahead and spend that one challenge flag and gain the touchdown. The act of gaining this rushing touchdown allows them to reset their quick release tokens. They now have the ability to use this mechanism two more times. And if they rush for another touchdown later in the game, they'll have even more activations. Where the Sharks are very strong on offense, they don't have as much strength on defense. Let's take a look at the over-the-hill defense. At the end of every quarter, you're going to replace a capital letter defense with its lowercase equivalent. This is the starting hand that you will use for your defense. Notice you're only holding six cards and four of them have this uppercase letter. At the end of every quarter, you will choose which one of these cards to replace with its lowercase equivalent. You can go in order if you like, or you can choose the play that you want to have degraded. The lowercase value is lower than the uppercase. For example, the lowercase c and the uppercase c have different pass values, where the uppercase is better and the lowercase is worse. If you choose at the end of the first quarter to replace c, you would simply take this card away and you would have this card in its place. Your new deck of cards for the second quarter looks like this, where you have only three uppercase cards and now one lowercase. By the end of the game, your deck might look something like this, where you have three lowercase and one uppercase. And of course, if you go to overtime, you would degrade again further and have all four lowercase cards. One way to make your defense better throughout the game is actually to create turnovers. Anytime you force a turnover, you get to recover a capital letter card. So that means that you could replace your lowercase a and retrieve the uppercase a from the discard. We'll pick up the action in the third quarter. It's second and three for the fire from their own 35, and they're coming out with a pro set versus the nickel for the Sharks. 
the play combination is a play action pass versus man to man and that is going to be a defensive breakaway so the sharks have created a defensive breakaway here we're going to pull the game day card to find out what happens and that is a turnover in the upper corner so in this case four on four is a gain of nothing that's going to be a turnover right at that spot and more importantly the sharks have now created an opportunity to recover a capital letter card whenever they force a turnover they can swap out the lowercase with the uppercase card so they can take their lowercase a which is worse and recover their uppercase a which is better now, it can be any letter, A, B, C, or D. It's your choice. But whatever uppercase has been discarded, you can recover that by just swapping the lowercase for the uppercase. The Sharks are a very powerful team, especially on offense. Their elite receivers and quick release make the passing game very, very difficult to defend. In fact, most opponents tend to lean a little too hard trying to defend the pass, which opens up the ability for the Sharks to run. And they're running offense is actually quite good. So if the Sharks can keep their opponents off balance, they'll find it pretty easy to move up and down the field. On defense, however, their defensive deck is only six cards deep. It starts kind of weak and it gets weaker as the game goes on. Really need to focus on forcing turnovers to keep pulling back those capital letter cards to keep the defense as fresh as possible.